morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, obviously, great to join you guys this Monday morning. Uh, let me start by saying again, I know I reiterated it post game, but how wonderful it was to have our, our great fans in the stadium, how loud and proud they were uh, during homecoming. Uh, just a, a great Saturday. And I was glad that uh, Liberty Bowl and our, our great fans showed out and showed well. So pleased with what happened. Obviously, a lot of things that we saw on film, we need to continue to get corrected. Um, but, you know, I, like I talked to the team about it yesterday, the, the turnover margin was something that we continue to harp upon. Um, obviously, it was in our favor uh, for the first time in a long time. Um, but we also know we got a tough opponent in East Carolina coming here. Uh, anybody knows, right, the game versus us versus Temple was a tough one. They beat the brakes off Temple 45 to three. We understand East Carolina also has gotten a takeaway uh, in 17 straight games, at least one takeaway. And they also have their their prolific quarterback who's second in all-time history East Carolina in passing. Um, we've got a tough challenge ahead and I understand, uh, you know, what we got to get done and our players do too. We're excited about a great uh, work week ahead of us and keep pushing on. Evan and Frank. Ryan, <clears throat> how's it going? First of all, good. Evan, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, speaking of ECU, um, you probably are one of the few guys who remembers facing Ehlers three years ago. Do you kind of lean on any of that, or do you just kind of see how much he's improved, obviously being someone who can move, but obviously has thrown so much, you know, and grown as a passer? Yeah, you know, I, I probably won't go back and watch that film. You know me, I normally archive things all the way as far back as I possibly can, but, um, you know, always with different staffs, different coordinators, uh, all those things. Um, I won't, but Look, I, I know who he is. I, I know his game. And, you know, he's one of those young men that has certainly improved every single year. And he's having a fantastic year for them. Um, ECU plays very hard. They're well coached. Um, they do a ton of different things on defense. Who has had the opportunity to watch them? Uh, they're going to blitz the heck out of you from all different angles. Um, there's a reason why they're able to get all those turnovers. Uh, they're aggressive. And then we, we know they like to do a lot, you know, they're going to try to pound the ball and, and do a lot of things, but then their quarterback will take his chances and take shots as well. So, And then the uh, second question for me is, obviously you mentioned Kyle and out. Um, one, is there an update on Brandon's stats, Brandon Thomas? And two, if Brandon can't go, how concerned are you with your running back that because you guys did have a season low in rushing yards Saturday? Yeah, we, you know, I was not pleased with our rushing attack on Saturday. Um, you know, and again, it ultimately always starts with, Everybody involved, you know, whether it's from me schematically um, to our execution up front of this offense line, to the tight ends, to the running backs, to the receivers. So uh, it was not where we wanted and, and very displeased with that. Um, you know, Brandon truly is day to day. Um, we hope he can go uh, on game day. Um, and if he can't, you know, look, Rodriguez Clark, uh, we've got faith in him. He's, he's started plenty of games. Marquavius Weaver, obviously, that Ace Martin had that nice uh, leap over the top for the touchdown run. We still have Cam Fleming on our roster. So, um, you know, we got capable bodies, but, uh, you know, if Brandon go, he will. But we also know that we got to share the wealth back there uh, until we're fully healthy. And, and with that, I mean, you, you mentioned just kind of, you know, how you said the plan wasn't to have Seth throw 53 passes. So I'm guessing, would you are, are you concerned? Maybe, first of all, how was he feeling after the game? And as you have time to look at him, but, you know, you guys want to lean on him again, but is there a concern on kind of how to balance it out? Obviously with him still coming off the injury where you don't overwork him like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, absolutely. We didn't, uh, you don't want to overwork the injury. Right. And like I said, the biggest thing medically is, is there a concern for, for further risk and there isn't right there. So they don't sit there and say, Hey, it's just going to be a soreness deal, a factor dealing with that. Uh, he's a tough young man, but yeah, you sit there and look at, okay, he threw over 50 by the way. He's still a true freshman. <laughs> so, you know, there are part of you says, okay, we need to balance this out. Like we shouldn't be putting that uh, true freshman in that type of situation. Uh, but he has certainly handled it very, very well. And that's what makes him so special. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, obviously, we're, we're putting together a game plan versus East Carolina. Um, and we'll find ways. You, know, you guys know I want to try to be as balanced as possible. Thank you. Frank. Hey, Ryan, so um, in terms of practice, I know like last week you said, you know, he wasn't a full participant because you didn't want to, you know, get that arm sore. Is that a similar game plan this week or, you know, how are you gauging that? Yeah, you know, Frank, we since uh, yesterday we didn't throw and then today they're off. So really what will happen is I'll wake, I'll see him this afternoon, you know, in the training room, just getting some treatment on his arm, just check on him. And then I'll see him tomorrow morning and say, okay, how are you feeling? And, 
he may say, I feel good. It may be, Hey, you know, let's limit the reps and in, in certain situations instead of going throwing footballs at, uh, you know, seven on seven Skelly, maybe just goes and does inside run hands the ball off. Um, so I think that's kind of how we'll base it and see how he's feeling. He, he's a mature enough young man. And if he feels good, well, he'll obviously get uh, plenty of reps, but we do rotate anyways, right. You know, or guys, you know, Peter Parrish gets plenty of reps also. So it's not like, Hey, one guy gets it all. You know, we've got, uh, pretty good alternating system to make sure that uh, all hands on deck and everybody gets reps up. Um, we'll take it. And, and if he, if he wakes up tomorrow morning saying he's feeling really good, we, now we probably won't go full throttle with him until Friday uh, just to be smart and cautious with it. Now looking at your defense, they did some good things against UCF and Navy, and then it all kind of came together against SMU. And then from what I could, could read about last year, you guys were in a similar situation where the defense kind of came on at the end of the year. What is it about this time of the year that kind of gets your defense to click like that? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I think last year was more of understanding the scheme better, you know, given the, the COVID all season, the way things worked. Uh, this year, I think, you know, part of it is, you know, there's a little bit of everything that gets involved. We've changed things up, you know, we're, we're being multiple with what we do, multiple in our fronts, uh, our pressures. Uh, we've got certain guys stepping up. Um, you know, sometimes coming off that bye gets guys rejuvenated. Um, it's a combination of a lot of things. And I've always said this, you know, one of the things about turnovers is once you get one, generally they start to come in droves. It's kind of contagious, which is a good thing when you're on the plus side of it. It's obviously bad if, you know, your, your offense giving them up. But uh, I, I think they feed off each other and uh, they, they get, you know, plus confidence. And then confidence builds the ability to play faster and do those things and understand the scheme. Uh, even even further down the line. And then with the injuries, I mean, you guys have had a number of different injuries you had to deal with this season. How do you keep your guys, you know, focused and, and, and not looking down when you have so many guys who are in and out? I mean, you get Seth back, but then you lose Brandon Thomas. I mean, how do you guys, how do you keep them, you know, focused on, on, on the game plan? Yeah, you know, credit to the guys, the players, our, our student athletes have been absolutely phenomenal, Frank, with their mindset, their approach. And I think that's with everything and within our program, right? I mean, easily could have, you know, looked their head down after that three-game losing streak and said, yeah, we got no chance. What are we doing? And like a lot of 18 to 22-year-olds say, this isn't for me. This is too hard and and gone the gone a different direction. But uh, they've, like I've said, they, they've been so great. They've been awesome and steadfast in their mindset, their approach, and their work ethic. And so when injuries occur, they look at, hey, this is another thing of adversity within our program or within to an individual the next man up mentality. Uh, that's why we train. That's why we work. And that's why we believe. My last question for you is, you know, you guys have been on this high before after the Mississippi State win. And then that's when some, in terms of losses, things kind of unraveled. How do you prevent that from happening after such a big SMU win? Well, look, like I said, you know, um, we understand how good of an opponent East Carolina is coming. We've got to work harder. It's we. It's not just the opponent. It's us got to get better ourselves. I mean, East Carolina has a lot of similarities uh, to UTSA as far as, well, maybe they didn't initially have that national recognition. But you put on the film of East Carolina, and I, and <laughs> they give me a lot of angst because they're a really, really good football team. And they do a lot of good things, and they're capable. And three of their four losses have come from seven points or less, just like ours. I mean, they – went toe to toe with South Carolina who just beat Florida. They are capable and they got some players and they're making plays. And uh, our players understand the importance of focusing on ourselves and getting better. And no, so if, if things don't go our way, it's not because we looked past it or we were so caught up on last week. No, we know that our, our focus has to be 100% on a heck of a East Carolina team coming to Liverpool on Saturday. Appreciate you, Ryan. Yes, sir. Thanks. Back to Evan. Um, John, going back to that November success, Ryan, you've been here for this run in November where you guys are just all turned up a notch, not just defensively. Um, what do you think it is around, you know, just from the guys who've been here, from you and um, Jones, who've been here for the last four years, um, what is it about this month where you guys kind of understand, hey, this is where we typically click and just kind of, you know, put things together? What is it about November, you think, from what you've seen being here? Yeah, you know, I, Evan, I don't sit here and say, hey, it's like all of a sudden, Boom, month of November hurts and like a different mindset and change and, you know, the, the moon settings, and daylight settings. I, I don't think any of that stuff. I just think that, you know, the sense of urgency has been there and we've just been very fortunate to play very well uh, during this month. Obviously, we're only as good as our last game. So, 
we know this next game coming has a lot of challenges, but you know, I have been here to see that this run in November. And I think there's, you know, it's a lot of pride. And sometimes it's, you know, kind of like I just mentioned with Frank, sometimes you gain confidence in what you're able to do. Right. And um, we go back to, you know, what was 2018 when we were four and four and after the bye and, you know, and just gain confidence. Okay. We got this, you know, okay. This plan's right. And I, that's the one thing is I truly believe not just because I'm the head coach, but I think our players have great buy-in and that's, that's been a lot of fun because I don't go up there and see guys tuning us out, tune their coaches out. It's okay. How can we get better? Kind of like I told you guys last week, you know, and even during the buys, I challenged our guys yesterday. I said, we have to improve. We have to be better. We have to outwork yesterday. Everything we want to do uh, has to be better than it was the day before. And 95% of the guys sitting there, yes, sir, got it, let's go. And uh, that's what's uh, appreciative. I challenged our staff this morning too. I said, this has to be, we have to put the better, we have to put the bet together our best game plan possible. And we've got to, and so it's a challenge for everybody, myself included. And it's not about looking back, looking ahead. It's, Let's be really good today. And then my last question is, um, we haven't seen David Kemp the last few games. Um, is there anything about his status? And second, what's being done with the field goals? Because obviously you guys, I believe, have made one field goal in the last six games, I believe, looking at the stats here. So what's being done at this point to try to correct some of those issues at this point, knowing that it is something that has been now reoccurring? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I'll be the first to admit our – our extra points and field goals have been uh, below, way below standard. Well, it's not uh, way below our expectations. It's been uh, below par. It's just been it's not what we want here. And it's been very, very disappointing. Um, yes, we do have a special teams coordinator that needs to get those guys kicking at a higher level, um, but it has been disappointing. Now, David Kemp did that with some injuries. Then he came back 100% fully healthy and, and didn't kick to the standard we want. Uh, Joe Doyle was brought in here to punt and to his credit um, has stepped up and been our best kicker so far practice. Uh, we have to find an answer there. It's obviously we put ourselves in poor situations as a team and as a program um, when we feel like we can't kick field goals. So uh, David and Caleb Hawkins, all those guys, Noah Grant, they're all going to continue to try to kick. And generally what happens, Evan, is, you know, I, I trust our special teams coordinator to say, okay, who's, who's going to give us the best chance uh, to make a 25 yard field goal or 35 yard field goal. And, you know, we talk about it. We talk about it during the week. We'll talk about it tomorrow after practice. We'll talk about it again, uh, you know, Thursday. And then just, you know, by the time Thursday night rolls around, I said, okay, who's our kicker for this game? And, uh, you know, I watch, I watch the film. I'm there with it. Um, they chart every kick. And, you know, it'd be great to see um, David Kemp, our, our freshman kicker, who is fully healthy, step up and be able to do it. But, I'm not sitting here throwing anybody on the bus. We just got to be better in that area. But I guess like specifically, like, is there anything you can just do at this point to change that? Like what, what can change at this point to where is it just a mental thing? Is it a coaching thing? What, what can be done? Do you think in your mind? Yeah. As long as you're kicking better. I, I would, <laughs> well, it's an interesting position, right? It's, you know, uh, if you said, Hey, Ryan, you know, that we got to get the uh, left guard to be a little bit better on, on, on power, you know, well, that, that's something I can, go back to the drawing board and, and sit down with getting a kicker to kick better. It's like asking a rider to write better. You know, it's uh, it doesn't just happen overnight. You hope that it's maybe not a mental block. You hope that I believe that our kickers all have the physical capabilities to do so. Uh, Evan, you know, look, uh, I don't, I'm not smart enough to know how to correct mechanics and kicking. Um, you know, I, I think our special teams corner does, uh, but a lot of it's just be able to get through it and, and finding ways to be successful at that position. Thank you. Now, Ryan, I know the, the game plan going into SNU was to be aggressive, you know, regardless of, of anything else um, and taking shots and fourth down. But does the kicking situation, is that, did that also play a role in, in, in you taking some gambles on fourth down? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I mean, it, it did. You know, I mean, um, in good conscience, I, I am going to be an aggressive coach that's going to stick it out there. But at the same point, you know, we've got to be smart. And, uh, but yeah, I think our kicking situation as a whole um, has given me reserve and, you know, when we can go for it, when we can kick and, and how we need to be, you know, we're always going to take an approach of being aggressive, but uh, if it makes more sense to try to get three points, but when you don't feel like it's a great option for you or the, you start looking at the risk reward, um, 
you, you got to play your cards in a different direction. How much of a, I guess, a, a sigh of relief is it to, to see your offense be able to, to convert on those fourth downs the way they did? <laughs> much needed, right? I mean, I, I kind of joked around with you guys in the press conference. Yeah. Oh, great, great job. Way to be gutsy on those fourth down. Neat call on the fourth and two, snap between the legs. But like I said, if those things didn't work, you guys said, hey, you idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, no, it, it is it's pleasing. And, and I think, frankly, like I told you guys post game, I think having the full team understanding, hey, this is the way we're going to do things. Um, this is how we're going to go about it. I think that confidence and them understanding, hey, we were going to take those risks uh, was huge. And so, yeah, it, it is nice to see. Obviously, the, the players went out there and made plays. Uh, we always say they have to step up in those types of situations. And they did a fantastic job. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.